Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Cause all I want. been through too much not to worship him hallelujah he's been a good God hallelujah in spite of everything he's still good thank you Jesus
on, let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. My worship is for real. Receive my receive my worship. All of my 
going to present the speaker to you. My friend, hallelujah. A woman of God. One who loves the Lord. I tell you, she's my sister-in-law, but she's more than a sister-in-law to me and my family. She loves the Lord. Co-pastor Monica Moulton. I'm glad when I met her. You know, I can tell her all my secrets. And I know she won't say nothing to anyone. And that's a friend indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to have a good friend. Hallelujah. That you can tell everything to. Amen. And you don't hear it. My God on the street. And nobody looking at you anyway funny. Glory to God. God has all these people. Some of these people in the house of the Lord. Some people say they can't find anybody to talk with. But there are people in the church who you can talk with. Amen. Amen. And it rests right there. Thank God for my sister-in-law, a woman of God, evangelist, co-pastor, Monica Moulton. God bless you. Let's send and receive co-pastor Moulton. We are not going to sit on her tonight, but we're just going to allow the Holy Ghost. We're going to allow the Holy Ghost to speak to her tonight. We're going to pray her up. Hallelujah. We're going to pray her up. Hallelujah. We're not going to leave her by herself. And the Holy Ghost take over tonight. God bless her. Co pastor, evangelist Monica Moulton. I feel like gold with all. I feel. something I just wanted to praise God if you want to lift your hand if you oh hallelujah if you want to lift your hand and just give God a praise for a minute I want oh hallelujah come on God has saved you God has protected you God has kept you come on we're gonna praise God as never before
I don't know what the Lord will say tonight, but I just pass the morning and open the mouth and the Lord will speak to you. God is good. And his mercies endure it forever. I love the Lord with all my heart because I know that I reach the age where I might as well I just give up and just say, Lord, do what you want with me. You know, when you get older, you get serious about the salvation. Because you realize that you have given so much to the devil that what you have left, you might as well give it to Jesus. Amen. And I'm talking to even the younger folks. Even if, if you're not as old as me, you need to just give everything to Jesus. Amen. Our scripture is taken from um, Ephesians chapter 3. Chapter 3 from verse 16. That I pray to God that he will touch my mouth. Send a word in the name of Jesus. Just point to me and say, Lord, use it. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that he might be filled with all fullness of God and then we go to Colossians chapter 2 Colossians chapter 2 from verse 6 as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him and establishing the faith as he have been taught a lot of people don't want to stay right there amen abounding therein with thanksgiving beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities. Rooted and grounded. Very important words, very important words. As I was looking in the dictionary and I wanted to know exactly what um, rooted was. Rooted and, and grounded. Let me give you a little story. I have a, I have a tree, two trees in my house. At my house, I have an apple and I have a, a pear. And they grew. For the first year, they grew. The second year, they grew. Third year, there were some bad apples coming on to the apple tree. And the last, last year when it, when it grew, all the apples were bad but the um the pear there was one pear that was hidden in the leaves and it was very good i was going to cut down the trees but i found one good pear So I had to save the tree. Lord have mercy. And I, and I just got a message from you. Because sometimes you don't look like it. Hallelujah to God. But, 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 but if you wait on time. God will expose what is inside of you. Lord have mercy. We have destiny inside of us. Everybody in here has destiny. Everybody that's filled with the Holy Ghost has destiny. Has a purpose. 
I hear evangelist said, this is the time where we need the Holy Ghost. This, oh God, I wrote my notes, but God, I'm going somewhere else. God, sometimes, listen, in this time and age, I look at the church and I said, my God, sometimes people don't want you to even speak in tongues again. But listen to me, the spirit of the God, that's the essence of the church. Without the spirit of God, you're none of his. It doesn't matter how you can talk. It doesn't matter how you can sing. Without the spirit of God, you're none of his. God wants his spirit to rule. Hallelujah. Sometimes we make our programs, but God wants to stop it. God want to come in. God want to do something different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a Pentecostal church. Come on. This is a Pentecostal church. It has roots. Lord have mercy. And we're not going to move away from the roots. Say amen somebody. Nothing qualifies you to be a Christian except God. It doesn't matter how educated you are. It's good for you to be educated. But let me tell you something. Without the spirit of God, you're none of his. Hey, hallelujah. The spirit will direct you. The spirit will unveil what God has downloaded in you. The Bible said in the beginning, when God created man, God stooped down and he breathed in man. Hey, hallelujah. And man became what? Man became a living soul. Because he said, the living, the living, the living shall praise me. God don't want no dead praise. God want lively praise. Lively stones in his house. We can't come in the house of God and act cute. The Bible said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts, be thankful unto him. I wonder if there's anybody here who has something to thank God about. Man, when I look at what God did for us. He died on the cross for us. The Bible said he grant according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. There was a young guy. I forgot his name now. But he was a rich guy. Rich, very rich. Um, he had a lot of money. So what he did was he went out and he bought seven cars. He bought a Mercedes and he bought a Porsche portion. What's the other one? I can't even remember the other name, but he bought the high class car, which would cost about a hundred and something thousand and all that. He bought it, but he said after seven days, he was sorry that he bought it because it didn't satisfy him. His conclusion was there was a hole in my soul. Hallelujah. He said there was a hole in my soul. And nothing can fill that hole except Jesus. Let me look at these words. Uh, to be grounded. Grounded. Grounded in love. Grounded. The dictionary said well balanced. Um. Uh, factors forming a basis for action, a justification for a belief, grounds for optimism. So you're grounded, solid surface of the earth. Um, and the factors is formed. You have the basis, you have the, the base. It's firm, it's solid. Grounded, it's solid. And God wants Christians to be solid. In love. 
the Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The love of God is unconditional. The love of God is unconditional. And the love of God, it starts with the spirit of God because he said when the spirit of truth is come, and he also said the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts. You can't have that true love except God shed it in your heart. And this only comes by the spirit of God in you. Amen. If we don't have the spirit of God, we'll have love that um, it's conditional. If you don't give me something, I don't love you. You know those kind of love. And if you're married to someone and they, and they don't look after your dinner, you kick them out. Say amen, man. That's true. But the love of God, the love of God is great. When God comes in your system, the Bible said, not I that live, but the Christ that liveth in me. And I always invite and tell sinners that when you accept Christ, you can't be a sinner and say, you, 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 I, 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 I can't live the life. You don't want to come to Jesus because you can't live the life. Except Jesus comes in your life, then you can live the life. Amen? Amen? Because the Bible said, not I that live, but the Christ that liveth in me, and the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It all starts with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, which, and it's a, a gappy love. I love that. I love that pass it all understanding. And like I said, the essence of the love, um, it takes up residence in your heart and it makes you different. You just can't act the way you usually act. Because when somebody see you loving the person who hates you, they are amazed at that. Somebody kick you, somebody tell you off, and, how, and, and you have to go to that person and say, I love you and show them love. You can't pretend love. You have to show love. Amen. And, and the Bible said, um, the spirit of God is a heavenly treasure in an earthen vessel. And you got to take care of it. And I always say, take care of your body. Take care of your body because, man, there is some dynamite inside of it. There's some power that is inside of it. You look at me, but I'm not ordinary. If you want to act ordinary, that's your business. But I have God inside of me. And listen what the Bible calls your royal priesthood. Holy nation. Tell the person beside you, act like royal. Act like royal. You're not ordinary. Come on, you're not ordinary. A lot of times we as Christians hold on our heads. And having those pity party. And act like you're nothing. But the Bible said you're royal priesthood. Holy nation. You're here to declare the kingdom of God. You're here to represent heaven. Man, stand up and act like you're royal. And the Bible said, growing in faith. When you grow, the living thing undergoing natural development by increasing in size and changing physically. When you're growing in faith, there must be a difference in your life. You can't allow this Satan to allow you to be a victim today. And next week you're praying and fasting and you're still a victim. And Satan can step on you at any time. And do what he wants to do with you. The devil is a liar. 
But you have to get up. Come on saints of God. Christians can't be passive. Come on. Christians can't be passive. You have to be what? You have to be active. Lord have mercy. Sometimes when you pray, you can't pray in the pity prayer. You got to say, devil, get out of my way. Come on. You have to be charged up in the spirit. Man, you go before some demons, they stand up in your face. You better get charged up in the spirit of God. You got to grow in the spirit. When a plant begins to grow, it begins to stretch its branches. It has the root and it has to be watered. Come on, we have to be watered by the word of God. And when you're watered by the word of God and you begin to set out branches. My God, listen to me, you need space. Jesus, you can't let nobody keep you cluttered. My God of mercy, you need some space to grow. Come on, you need some area to grow. You got to push yourself. Lord Jesus, we can't be lazy. You notice some plants that are coming up. When the plants are coming up, sometimes you have some weeds that wrap them around. But if the plant is strong enough, it will push its way up. Hey, and it will spread over the branches. And it will spread over the weed. And it will say like, get out of my way. This is the same way the Christian have to do it. Come on, if things want to wrap you around, you got to say, get out of my way. I am going higher. Moshanda. God called you to be going higher. You can't stay where you are. You can't get up every day and say the same prayer. You can't get up every day and say the same testimony. Destiny is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the person beside you, you got to move. When God get ready, you, be, hey, shut up on my side. you better move. Most of the plants, they need air. They need breath. And this is what God does. He says, breathe the Holy Spirit in you. You have the air. All those who have the air say, thank you, Jesus. Man, you have to act like you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is power. Tell the person beside your power. We have five senses, five senses, and it's a gift from God that you can smell and you can, you can hear and all that. Very nice. And you can touch. And if you don't have these things, sometimes you compensate with the things that you lost. Amen? Amen. Senses allow you to navigate through the natural world. Natural, and that is so good. But there is something called faith. You call things to what they were. Lord Jesus. Carnality and faith does not mix. Because when the eye sees something. When the spiritual eye sees something. The natural eye can't see it. When Elijah said that there was three and a half years, three and a half years, no water. And God tell him that water is going to come back. Lord Jesus. He went and tell Ahab, it's coming back. Jesus. When the Lord told him that, he told his servant, go look. When the servant went and he looked, he didn't see nothing. This is what faith does. Faith.
it is not equal to senses. It's above senses. The senses is tell you there is no rain. But God is saying there is rain. Hey, Jesus. It elevates above, above the natural senses. He sent him the first time. My God, he didn't see nothing. Elijah is seen it, but the man can't see it. Lord Jesus. Second time, Elijah saw it, but he couldn't see it. But the seventh time, when he went, he said, man, I see the hand. God is coming true. Carnal thinking says, I feel like God is with me. I feel like. But faith is saying, I know. Faith is saying, I know God can do it. The carnal man said, I, I think maybe God can. I think, I think, and I, I think. But the, 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 the man with faith said, I know God can. The Bible said to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Your choices determine your destiny where you're going. We are moral agents and God gave us free will. And you can make your own decisions. That's the basic human right because you can make your own decisions. God did that. He, he put Adam, Adam and Eve in the garden and said make a choice. Take what you want. But don't touch that. But they were so disobedient. So disobedient they went and touched something that God said don't. But the devil twists God's word. And put in his little word. And sometimes we don't listen. But there was a man who was blind. The man who was blind could not see. Jesus. Uh, Jesus saw this blind man. And the people were saying, you know, did he sin? Why he's blind? Is the parent sin? Why he's blind? Do you know some things happen to you and people ask you, maybe you're sinning? Things happen to you and maybe you're sinning. You're sick and somebody say you're sinning? What did he do? Hey, Jesus. What did he do? But God, Jesus, what he did, he went down and he, he uh, gets some spittle and he got some mud and he made a medicine. I don't know what he called it, but I call it mud, 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 um, mud spittle. I mean, these, these new doctors would make a name to it because everything has a name. Made a spittle, put on his eyes. And even though Jesus did it, the man couldn't see still. Do you know you can be in the presence of God and don't get your release? Hey, Shama, hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. But what Jesus did was, Jesus said, go to the pool of Siloam. The man couldn't see, but he heard. And he followed what Jesus said. He was obedient to what God said. I don't know how he got to Siloam. He must have called a friend and said, come with me. But the man was obedient and went to Siloam. And the Bible said when he dipped, when he washed himself, he was healed. The evidence was there. Faith carried evidence. Did you hear what I said? Faith carry evidence. The evidence was there and they could not say he wasn't healed because the man was healed. Then they asked him, who healed you? He said, I don't know about this man, but a man called Jesus. There's a man called Jesus who touched him. 
and he got a release. Anybody here been touched by Jesus? As a Christian, you should be a witness to somebody else and tell them a man called Jesus. Sometimes we sit down on our testimony. Don't want to tell nobody about it. But you need to walk about and say, the man called Jesus touched me one day. Some of us, you know, when God saved us, we act like we were that nice. My God, have mercy. Some of us act as if, you know, when God saved you, God pretty you up. God changed your features. You look heavenly. Oh, Jesus, you look different. A lot of people usually say when people get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, people usually say you look changed. There's some sort of aura on you. And when God changed you, you need to tell somebody else. Because the Bible said such were some of you. Such were some of you who usually thief. Such were some of you who usually gamble. Such were some of you who usually do for some bad things. If God should open it up, we would run. But we have to recognize the greatness of God. You got to remember where he brought you from. He brought you from a mighty, mighty long way. All those who God brought you from something, just get up and say, thank you, Jesus, and sit down. should be rooted and grounded in the faith when you're on this journey not everybody you can walk with not everybody you can have as friend because when God begin to exalt you when God begin to talk to you sometimes they don't believe what God is saying God is taking you to another level sometimes you can't tell your friend Thank you, Jesus. Halabo Shatala Messiah. Joseph told his brethren, man, and they got up against him. Sometimes when you talk what God is doing, people will get up against you. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But if God says so, no devil in hell can move what God says. If God said it, believe it. And sometimes the consequences, the consequences for our choice leads to death. But we should, know, we should not follow the, the, the carnal nature. Those who are controlled by the spirit. And I heard evangelist Pam said, holiness is still right. Yes. Messiah. Holiness is still right. The Bible said you should be holy because God is holy. Holiness is still right. Touch somebody and tell them holiness is still right. You're going to walk right. You have to do right. Yeah, Jesus, act right, act like a Christian. You shouldn't be in a group and you are doing the same thing the group is doing. If they are of the world, you should be different. The Bible says you're called out. Called out from among them. Separate yourself, you're different. Hey, Shanda, we are royal people. Keep herself in perspective. We are royalty. We should make a distinction between the world and us. Because we are set apart. We are different. Yes, sir. Yes, we are different. Let me 
go to what Colossians said. I like Colossians. Colossians 2. He said, beware lest any man spoil you. My God, beware. Turn to somebody and say, beware. Because there is so much doctrines now that are going on. And a lot of people turn their TV on and listen to everybody that's ministering. Man, and they will come to church and tell you that that is what the scripture said. Because they turn it around. But the devil is a liar. God has some people who will not mingle with the ungodly. Who will not mess themselves up with the ungodly. But they will separate themselves. Stand up for righteousness. Oh, Shatala Messiah. Thank you, Jesus. But beware of the one who is doing the philosophy. And the philosophy is man-made ideas. Lord, have mercy. If we follow man-made ideas, we turn fool. Because we would know who we are. But the devil is a liar. I'm a woman. And I love being a woman. And those who are men should, oh God, have mercy. Should love being a man. Because God made you that way. And we are not going to change because philosophy change. The church has to stand up. The church has to stand up and say this is what God says. He breathed into man. Then he looked inside and take out a rib and said I'm going to make a woman. He didn't say I'm going to make another man. He said I'm going to make a woman. To be the helpmeet. And God Almighty, we need husbands and wives in the church. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. And we won't come down because God said so. The tradition of men want to change the church. But the church needs to stand up. Lord have mercy. We need to be vibrant. Stand up and defend what you believe in. Yeah, hallelujah. Don't feel, you know, draw back in a shell and act like you're nobody. You're somebody. God made you to be somebody. You're a representative of heaven. The philosophy, my goodness, it's changing the world. And, if you, and it's creeping into the church. But in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is against this. Because the church has to stand up. The church has to keep its standards. The, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those who agree with me just get up and say, thank you, Jesus. Man, I feel the Lord speaking to me. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's just get up and just give God a praise. Let's give him a praise. Yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I asked God to touch my tongue. And man, if he touched my tongue tonight, I'm going to speak as he say. We must, as the church, have the fear of God. The Bible said the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom comes from God. When you have the wisdom of God, you can act right. You can do the right thing. You can serve him 
Even if it get hard, you serve him. Even when it get tough, you serve him. Even when you don't feel like because we don't worship by feelings. Because we know he's sovereign. Because we know he's God. Because we know who, is he, who he is. We come in worship. Yes, Jesus. Because we know he's sovereign. He do anything he wants. Whenever he wants. However he wants. Because he's God all by himself. And you can't manipulate God. Hallelujah. You have to just follow what he says. You either do or die. Hello, Shatala Messiah. Yeah, he said, Job, where were you? Man, sometimes we think we and God are equal. We tell him anything. We serve him anyhow. We hello about Shata Messiah. But he said, Where were you? When I stretch heaven out. Hello, Moshanda. Where were you when I breathe into man? Where were you when I was doing all these things in the beginning? Man, you weren't there. Hey, hallelujah. He's God all by himself. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. He said, I am that I am. You don't make me what I am. And if we believe that, we would act better. We would worship God more. We would love him more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us are influenced by, by teachers, by preachers. And, and sometimes we run away from the church and don't listen to the word of God. But he said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You can't do it of yourself. The word, the word has to be in the heart. In order to be promoted, in order to grow, you need the sincere milk of the word. A mother feed her child from her breast and give her that milk that promote uh, the child. The, the, the child can't get disease easily and all that. That the, the, the breast milk is so important. And if you don't get it, you lose something. When we are growing, we need the word. We need the word of God. The word is life. I will eat it. The, the word is a drink. I will drink it. The word is bread. You will eat it. Everything you need is in the word of God. Because the word is life. Man, there are so many people with confused identity today. Confused identity. Don't know who they are. It's an identity crisis. I don't know if I'm a woman or a man or a he or a she or a they. But the Bible said you're wonderfully made. When I look in the mirror, I say to myself, I'm wonderfully made. Solomon said, I'm black, but I'm comely. All those who feel good about themselves, just praise God and sit down. And if you don't feel good about yourself, run to the altar because we want to pray for you. Hey, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are some people who are abused. And there are some people who have been through a lot. And sometimes it takes away their self-esteem. But we have a God. Lord Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. He can change your mind. 
He can change your direction. He can change your status. Because man, you're a, you're, you, 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 now you're just a, 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 a person on earth. But when you gain, get his name and his name is on your forehead, what the Bible says, my God. You're going to be one of those who are caught up with the name on your forehead and you're Jesus only. Sometimes we don't take, we, 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 we take for granted the love of God and sometimes we don't assess and see what God really done for us and what God has called us to. And, and, and our purpose on this earth. I don't care if you don't have money. I don't care if you have money. Because those who have money and don't have money is the same in Jesus' eye. A, a bishop, if you have a house and I don't have one, it's nothing to Jesus. All Jesus wants is your heart. All Jesus wants is for you to give him you. When, he, when you give him you, you will grow. And then when you come into the temple of God. And you feel his presence. Hello, Shatala Messiah. Do you know when the spirit of God come down on you? And, 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 and you're, you're before God. God begin to reveal the things in your life. And sometimes you think you're clean. But when God begins to reveal it. You say, woe is me because I'm undone. Hey, Shatala Messiah. Cleanse me, Jesus. You know, Jesus want to touch some of our lips. The word of God is so good. He said, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. You grow in love. Grow in love. He said, a new commandment I give unto you. That you see like how I love you? I want you to love the other person just the same way. And the only way that can happen is when the love of God is in your heart. And love is patient. Sometimes you have to wait. I was, I, was, I was looking at the eagle. I was looking at the eagle that want, want a mate. Want a mate. And you know what? Um, the, 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 the lady eagle, the lady eagle would drop a little thing. Like a, a, a twitch or whatever. A twig. She would drop a twig. And you know what the man had to do? He had to run and make sure he catch it. And then he would do it a couple, she would do it a couple times. And if the man can't catch it, she's not going to marry to that man. Pay, that, that, that's patience. Lord, that is patience. Listen to me, when God is dealing with you, you need patience. Because sometimes God is not going to come through the same time you want it. Ah, but he'll come on time. He'll come right on time. I, I was telling you about the young man that um, have all these Mercedes. And he said, uh, he said, I want to feel real love. Do you know that people really want to feel real love? And that's why people get things. You have a nice coach in your house. Man, it doesn't look good. You get another one. And the next year, it's not going to look good because you need another one. Because there's a hole in the soul that needs to be filled. And the only thing can fill it is some Holy Ghost power. The only thing that can fill it is Jesus himself. I don't care. I, having a husband is very nice. I love my husband. But he can't fill that hole. When you go to your bed at night, who do you pray to? You pray to God himself. When you're feeling sick, who do you pray to? You, oh, shut up, you pray to Jesus. You can't pray to the husband because he has some ailment too. And he's seeking help too. But my help. Oh, Shanda Messiah. Come on, oh, help. Come it from God who made heaven and earth. 
And I love the Bible. I just see it. It said, mortify your members. Kill it. Stop the things that give you trouble. Which means you got to do something. You can't just lay back. You have to do something. The Bible said, and he are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. He is God by himself. Man, this, this, this walkway that we are in, it's a faith walkway. And, um, and somebody said, faith is stretching the muscles. There are some times in our lives where um, we can pray to God for something and we get it right away. But there are other times where you have to stretch to get it. Amen? You have to do something to get it. You have to act. I, I look at um I look at Brother Joseph life. I look at Joseph life and I said, he's a young boy, 17 years old cast in prison but God had a destiny for him and sometimes the way that God takes you you won't like it but even if you don't understand it can you imagine you have to praise God through that bishop Messiah, Messiah. Do, can you imagine you have to pray God praise God through it Bishop Bill is sick and we prayed for him. But you know, something strike me and said, we pray, we pray, we pray. But we need to just say, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. There are some instances where you have to just stand back and say, Lord, I can't do anything more. I pray to you. I know you answer. Hello, Shama. Maybe I didn't understand exactly what the answer is. But Lord, I know you're doing something in the corner. Because by right, he should have been dead. According to the doctor. But when the doctor say one thing, God says another thing. And saints, you have to realize that we are in the hands of God. And when God says so, and when you're going through your problems, when you're going through your infirmity, just stand up and say, Lord, it's hard, but you know, uh, let me say it. We have to say, Sister Pam, we have to say, Lord, I thank you for this. Can you imagine you standing up and telling God, I thank you for the problems. I thank you for the issues. I thank you for what you're going. Oh, shut up, Messiah. I thank you for the infirmities because I know you're up to something. God is up to something. He said he will never see the righteous forsaken. Never, never, never see the righteous forsaken. And if I'm a person who's striving, God has to do something. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a miracle working God. Uh, and, and, he, and we have to have mountain moving faith. Experiences, miracles, wonders. There are some people who don't have a testimony. Because they can't recall what God is doing for them. But the mere fact that he wake you up. The mere fact that he set you in the right mind. The mere fact that you can walk. The mere fact that you can put food in your mouth. You better thank God. I was watching someone some times ago. I, I don't like to talk about it. But when I talk about it, then people will know what I'm talking about. I was watching someone some time ago who got their poo 
put it in the plate. Use the knife and fork. Sometimes we act like God has to do what he's doing for us. And we and God owe us something. And we don't realize that we need to praise God for the little things that he's doing for you. God is a miracle worker. God, he must do something for you that you can talk about. Because when you speak, it strengthens somebody. My first miracle in Canada, my first miracle in Canada, my husband is here. My husband is there. Some of you may not hear, heard about it. My husband wanted to do the construction. And he, you know, took all the little money we have. Bishop knew this. And buy all the tools and everything. And my God, nothing. We had to pay the rent on Monday morning. We had to pay the rent on Monday morning. And Mother Bon, we come to church at night, you know, man, and service was hot. That's why when you come to church, if you need something from God, praise will break through. Praise will help you to cause the breakthrough. If you have something, if, if you're going through something and you need a release, you got to come to church and praise God. Don't come and fold your hand and have a pity party before the Prince of Peace. He needs some praise. Because after the praise break, hello Shama. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He said, get the musician. Help me music. Come on, play. He said, he get the musicians. He got the singers. March around the world. Hey. Woo. And there was a breakthrough. Good. The night we were praising God. I look at Pastor Moulton and he was praising God. And I said to myself, how could he be praising God like that? And we need the money Monday morning. And I went out and I went out and I came in back. And I said, okay, if he can praise God, I'm going to praise God too. That's why you must have a man who loves Jesus. You must have a partner that loves Jesus. Be a son the Messiah. Because if you see him doing something for God, you're going to want to do it too. We're in the height of everything. Everybody was praising. We needed $500 to put on the rent. Mother Ban Mouth could not stop saying, give Pastor Moulton 500. Her, he was Ella at the time. Her mouth began to say, give Ella Moulton 500. Give Ella Moulton 500. And her mouth could not stop. You think God don't have money? You need a little man. You, you need a little bus fear and you don't want to come to church the moment you come out God is going to speak to somebody you better give that person the money even if they don't want to give it they're going to pull it out of the pocket and say I don't know what's bothering me but God is telling me to give it to you and they'll never be quiet until it's done that's the God we serve. I, I tell you, God is good. Come on, give God a wave, praise. God has purpose. Make sure you pass the test. Because if you don't pass the test, you're going to go through it again. Why do you think that every time the same thing is happening? Because you didn't pass the one. You have to tell the person beside you, you have to pass the test. You have the footman. And then the test gets harder. Because you have the footman. You have the horseman. And then you have what? Jordan. The swelling of Jordan. And man, if you don't have the power of God to go before Jordan, Jordan will drown you. But he said to the people of God, though, though, though you walk through the fire, it won't burn you. If you go through the water, 
it won't drown you because I am with you. And most of all, the angel of the Lord. Come on, the angel of the Lord. And camp it round about them that fear him. Lord, I have some, I have some people who, I have some, some, some angels around me. At night, he dispatch angels. Go down by Sister Sharon. Stay over her bed. No demon shall come into that house. Eshata Messiah. Because you have the power of God inside of you. Come on, saints. We are faith people. We are faith people. Don't act like you don't have faith. You don't have God. You should not allow the devil to run you out of your house. The demon come in. You talk to him. Get out of my house. This is mine. The Lord dwells here. Talk to him like a person. Come on, come on, saints. Wake up, wake up, wake up. So faith is a muscle that grows by stretching. And when you have faith, you begin to talk some nice things up to yourself. You said, I'm the righteousness of God. Oh, have mercy. And, and, and when we look at David, and I'm telling you, this, this warfare, this warfare, it's not easy. But like I said, when you have God leading you, it makes a difference. Because we have a goal. Every one of us here has a goal. Where are you going? We are going to heaven. Amen? The, 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 the end result is that we are going to heaven. We are going to make it in. Amen? God told Joshua, he said, I, I was with you. I'm with you. I'll be with you. And everywhere you place your foot belongs to you. Which means you have to do something. He said, everywhere you place your foot. Which means you have to get up. And you have to move. And you have to put your foot. You have to be active as saints of God. Amen. God will take you to your destiny if you trust him. No one can override what God says. No one can override your purpose. And the Bible said all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord. If God can deliver those people. God can deliver you. The Bible said no one to him. That is able to keep. Ex, ex, he's able to do exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all. You may ask. You may think. According to the power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. You have to have faith in God to get some deliverance. You have to trust God to get your deliverance. I don't know who needs deliverance tonight, but God wants to deliver some people. I know I'm late, but I'm coming down. The Bible said, this is my last the Bible said, God called, God said to, to, a, to Abraham, what I want you to do, what I want you to do, Abraham, is to get your son. And I want you to fix the altar, put him on it. The only son. Put him on it. But after all the process that he went through and put him on, what happened? He was on Mount Horeb. And on the third day, you see God will come through? On the third day, the ram, a ram never usually go on Mount Horeb. But this time, this time, do you know that when God does things for you, it's amazing. And you wonder how it happened. 
Listen, but this time, when he looked, he saw a ram caught in the ticket. God, oh Sunder, God is a provider. God is a deliverer. God will take you through. God will do what he never did before. Some of you, some of you, some of you um, go to the, the post office and you said, you said, um, boy, I wanted this money. They come to church Sunday, Bishop, and they said they needed some money. And Monday morning, they get an envelope and they said because they prayed Sunday. It's not because you prayed. God will see about you. God know exactly what you want. And God sent the money from last week, Wednesday. So I reach to you on time. He's an on time God. Come on, he's an on time God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you're sick, God can heal you. My first experience with healing, I was about 12 years old. I went to church and I had roasting fever. Roasting fever. That's why I thought like this because I know God. Roasting fever. You know, our parents usually take us to church. Sick or no sick. Those who are pastor's kids. Sick or no sick, you're going to church. Even if they have to wrap you up, they're taking you to church. So they took me to church and I was dying, man. But it was prior meeting. Some people don't love prior meeting. I, 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 Bishop, I told, my, I told the saints at my church that we need, the young people need to start kneeling down again. Kneel down again. Kneel down again. Kneel down. Oh, Shanda Messiah. A um, long time ago, we older folks usually prostrate ourselves before God. And God, oh, Shanda, hallelujah. The moment I knelt down, the moment I knelt down, mother, you know what happened? I feel like something unveiling. Listen to me. I feel like something unveiling. And I jump up because I was so frightened. When I got up, brother, I was healed. No fever, no cold. God just did it instantly. So I know that God can do it. God can heal every broken hearted. God can touch you where it hurts. Hallelujah to God. Some of us give up on God. But I encourage you tonight. Do not give up on God. God is bigger than your problem. God is bigger than your situation. Hallelujah to God. God can touch you where it hurts. Earlier on there was a brother at my church who they, they, they um. His, his boss was giving him problem. Boss was giving him problem. You know what he did? He wrote the boss's name and put in his shoes. And he went to work. Because guess what? You trample over your foot. You know what happened? The boss had to change. Oh, hallelujah. You can't let the devil ride on your back. Trample him on your foot. Come on, saints. You got to be vigilant. You got to be vigilant. I know some people need something from God tonight. I know some, some people need something from God tonight. And I'm getting kind of... I know somebody needs something from God. And you think that God lock it up. And think you can't get it. If it's money you want, God has it. Hello, Shama. If it's healing you want, God get it. God has it. And all you have to do is believe God. When the church started. On the day of Pentecost. The Bible said they were filled with they were on one accord and suddenly 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 the spirit of the Lord came hallelujah to God and something happened when the spirit of God is in the place something must happen hallelujah to God when the spirit of God is here something must happen 
because we are faith believers we are faith believers and we want to pray for somebody tonight who needs something from God anybody here who needs something from God if you need something from God come we want to pray I'm going to call the, the elders we're going to call Bishop these are men of God who can touch God Bishop Morris Sister Morris Evangelist Bishop Nunes and Sister Nunes they're going to come right at the front and if you need something from God if you need something from God come Elder Prince if you need something from God I want these men to pray for you Hallelujah It won't always be like this God is a Anybody need prayer? Come on No, no If you need the Holy Ghost, if there's somebody that's not saved and need Jesus, come on, somebody who's not saved and need Jesus. 